Hi, I'm Mike from 1A Auto. We've been selling auto parts for over 30 years. We'll follow our instructions on our scan tool. This vehicle has a check engine light on. So we'll change that. So it's a PO457, so EVAP control system. Uh, it's a small leak, so it says a leak, uh, leak cap loose off. So it's telling me that the gas cap uh, may need to be replaced. It has been replaced on this car and the code came back. So we believe that the filler neck is rusty and rotted because this car has lived its entire life uh, in the rust belt. So we're going to replace the filler neck uh, to solve our problem. To remove this passenger side kick panel, we've got the door open. There's a small plastic clip here. I'm going to use the plastic prying tool. You can get these from 1AAuto.com. Just kind of slide it underneath here and gently pry it out. Try not to pop it out and then lose it. So once it pops out, there's a white grommet that locks it. That pushes in there so that can be reused. Put that aside. There's another uh, fastener here. It's a plastic fastener. So you can actually, if it's too tight, you could use a flat bladed screwdriver or the flat end of your trim clip tool and turn it. It's pretty loose. I'm actually going to turn it with my fingers to unscrew it and then pull it off. I'll take the plastic prying tool and we'll go up underneath this plastic and just go along and pop it up off the clips. And you can pull out the trim. So with the trim out of the way, we can reach up and up here next to this brown connector, on the other side is a green connector. Unplug that green connector. That's the fuel pump relay. With that unplugged, we can start the car and let it stall. It'll release, it'll release the fuel pressure and you can work on the fuel system in the car. So when you're working on any part of the fuel system in the car, you want to relieve the, the fuel pressure. So say you want to disconnect the fuel line, change the fuel filter. This way you don't have fuel spraying out on you when you go to release those lines. This is the easier way to release that pressure. It makes less of a mess. You basically disconnect it. The fuel pump doesn't run and you can start the car on the fuel pressure that's remaining in the lines. That fuel runs out, the car stalls, you shut it off and the fuel pressure is released from the lines. I'm gonna reach up and push the lock in. It's this green tab, unplug it. Just like that, leave it unplugged. And now I can start the car. There we go, that's all it takes. Once it stalls, try to start it a couple times more. A little bit of fuel pressure left. That should be good. Loosen the lug nuts with the vehicle on the ground. This one has special lug nuts, so I'm going to use the key. The stock lug nut size is 19 millimeter. Uh, this one uses a 21, but it would be the same exact operation. You'd use the breaker bar with your 19 millimeter socket, and you just break the lug nuts loose one at a time. Raise and support the vehicle. You can use the jack and jack stands. We're going to use our two post lift. Just use your socket, or in this case, the lug nut tool. Finish removing the lug nuts by hand. Take the wheel and tire off and put it aside. To replace the fill neck, you want to make sure that your fuel tank is at a quarter or less, otherwise you'll need to drain some fuel from the car. 
Uh, it's easiest just to drive it if you can and run the fuel tank down. You don't want it filled to the top because when you release this filler neck, you'll spill some gas. The other thing to note too is that since you're working with gas, there's going to be gas fumes. Make sure you're working in a well-ventilated area. No open flames, sparks, whatever. Just be careful um, replacing this filler neck. With that being said, we're going to remove this cover to get to it. There is a 10 millimeter bolt here, a 10 millimeter bolt here, and then a 10 millimeter nut here on a stud. I've tried to spray them with some rust penetrant. I'm going to spray some more. They're pretty rusty. It's likely that they're going to break. So you may want to have some of these on hand. Spray some rust penetrant on this stud down here. I'm going to try to spray some in here and try to spray some up here. This cover to protect the filler neck kind of prevents me from getting to the back of them. I'm going to use a 10 millimeter socket, uh, extension, and a ratchet. I'm going to go on this one down here on the stud. Try to get this to move. Yeah, it's just, it's so rusted. It broke right off. Try this bolt here. Yep, that one broke. And this one's probably gonna break too. Car's lived its whole life in the rust belt, and it's likely this filler neck is very rusted. Yes, it's all rusted here and up here. Let me go up behind. There's three bolts that secure the filler neck to the body. I'm going to spray the back side of these bolts now that I can get to them. Back here. I'm also going to spray this one because I can get to it now. Remove the gas cap. Let that hang. Remove the three eight millimeter bolts that are holding in this flange that's holding the filler neck up into the body. That one's coming free. can come out. At this point, I would take a picture of your filler neck and just make sure that you can see all the lines because you're going to disconnect a couple of lines here and you just want to make sure you get them back in the same spot. So it's a good idea to just take a picture of it to help you remember. Take some needle nose pliers. We'll squeeze these spring clamps and just slide them up the hose. The same for both. I'll use a right angle pick to try to break the seal on the hose, but not damage the hose too much. So you just kind of work it around like that. And then you can kind of pull the hose up. These lines are in good shape. I'm going to try to save these lines. Our replacement filler neck does come with them from 1A Auto, but since they're in good shape, I kind of want to leave them in place. Pop this line off. So this one can stay together here. If you follow it down underneath, there's a connector spring clamp here that I'll disconnect and pop this one off. So I need it to this spring clamp here. It's a little, a little bit rustier. But for now, let me slide this off that. Take a right angle pick underneath the hose. And guide the hose off like that. This is a 10 millimeter bolt behind here. It's pretty rusty, so I had to, I got to force the socket on there. I sprayed some rust penetrant on there and I'm just going to work it off. Come 
comes off a little hard, I can go till it wants to stop, spray some more rust penetrant on it, and then turn it back on and continue that process to work rust penetrant into the threads. Tightening it, now we'll loosen it. It's starting to come loose. So I just kept working rust penetrant in here, back and forth, to try to get the rusty bolt out. And now it's free. So we'll leave that loose. The fill neck will come off of here once I loosen it from the bottom. I'm gonna loosen this hose clamp. It's really, really rusty. I actually knocked some of the rust off of it. Um, not quite a actual size anymore. Uh, worst case, if you need to, you could very carefully clip this off. Uh, I'm gonna try to jam a nine millimeter on here, a socket, and see if I can get it to, to turn. Uh, well, we're gonna get lucky today. It's gonna turn and come off. I will replace this clamp with a new one. So you want to have a new hose clamp on hand. I'm just going to undo it as far as it'll go and then bring it down and slide it over the filler neck. Here's a push clip that the filler neck is clipped to these lines here. It's a little bit rusty. I'm going to spray some rust penetrant on it just to help it slide apart. And then I will take a small flat bladed screwdriver. There's a little tab here. I'll push it in. Push this little tab in and on this side. And I'll just try to push this up through like that. Okay, the neck is almost loose. I'm gonna work on separating the filler neck from the hose going into the tank. Use a right angle pick. Kind of work around the hose. Try to break the seal. I'm actually going to use a older plastic prying tool. You can get these from One Auto, just so I don't damage the hose and just kind of gently help pry it around here. I just had to break the seal. The hose kind of rusted to it a little bit, and. I can work it out of here. There it is. I pull the filling neck out, got it out past the sway bar. Now you're really going to smell the gas. Here's the old filling neck. Pulled from the vehicle. It's a brand new one from moneyauto.com. Does come with these extra breather hoses. They're actually mounted uh, incorrectly, but it's just for shipping. So you, if you were to use these, the ones that are in the car are stainless and they're not rusty. So I'm not going to use the ones that came with this, but if you needed them, they are here. You can take a 10 millimeter and we'll just take them off. They should be pretty loose. And it's purely because of the way they're shipped. Um, they don't have a threaded uh, bolt hole to hold them to the filler neck. So when you're doing this and it looks like it doesn't fit or it's the wrong one, it's actually because these are just mounted here for shipping. So once you take this bolt out, they'd go in and get mounted to the car and then they'd sit like this, just like the originals. And you'd put the, you'd reuse the bolt that you took out of here and then this little tab doesn't get used for anything. We're gonna use the filler knock like this. I need to swap over a couple uh, pieces from it. These hoses can be reused. They're in pretty good shape. It doesn't look like it, but they're actually in pretty good shape. So we're gonna reuse them and put this new one back in the car. I need to swap over this uh, fuel shutoff valve. But other than that, it'll be ready to go. I want to reuse this hose, so I'm going to use some needle nose pliers and release the spring clamp, spring clamp here, pull it up, use the small pick, 
just gently pry underneath here and just work it around it. So pull the hose off so the hoses are loose. And flip it over. Spray some, spray some rust penetrant on these nuts and the studs. Just one on each side. These are eight millimeter. So use the eight millimeter socket and ratchet. Just carefully remove them. Get this one free. valve off. I'm just going to take some rust penetrant on a rag and just wipe it down, some of the rust off of it. It's a little rubber seal. So I'll reinstall this part. Place and we use these nuts. Now we'll tighten them down. Don't go super tight, you don't want to break off these studs, they're very small. So, let me get that one snug. Let me get this one tightened down. I'll just go once they get tight. Go a little bit more. Just like that. See this hose is already lining up where it was originally. So just put it over it. Take the needles pliers and reinstall the clamp. Right back in the same position. These are new nose pliers. Let's squeeze this clamp, pull it down. Use the pick, separate it. This car had an EVAP code for a small leak, a PO457. It said replace the gas cap. The gas cap was replaced. The code kept coming back. So it's likely that one of these lines here probably has a very small pinhole in it from rust or somewhere in this area. And it's causing a very small evaporative leak when the system goes into test mode. So we've replaced the whole filler neck because it's all rusty. Reinstall this hose. Go right to the stop. Put the clamp over it. and this will get clamped in the car. We need to remove these Phillips head screws from this collar or else the 
Fillernex is not going to fit into the body. This goes on the outside of the body and then sandwiches the Fillernex and holds it in place. So you can just use a Phillips head screwdriver. There's also a slot cut in them for a flathead screwdriver. And I'll use the Phillips head. And we'll put that aside. Leave the rubber gasket on here. That'll go up against the body. And when you put this in, it goes down over it. Put our new hose clamp on so we don't forget to put that on first. And that can sit like that. I'm going to take a little bit of white grease and just put it around here. That way it slides into the rubber hose that's going into the gas tank. And don't worry about it. If the white grease gets into the gasoline, it will just dissolve. But this way it'll slide into the hose and not tear it. All right, so we're going to go down. line up in place here. I'm going to go underneath. Take this, get this line out of the way. Put it up into the filler neck hose. And just like that. Remove this over like that. That will sit like that. Install this hose clamp. You can see the line on the hose where it was, the original. I tighten this hose clamp up. Just a bit more. I'm using an eight millimeter socket. This way I can get it sort of in place first, close to being tight. I'm going to put it right back in the same spot it was. There's a, a line marked on the hose. Hold it in place and then tighten it. This spring clamp looks pretty rusty. I'm going to get rid of it. I don't think I want to reuse it. Take it off this hose, get rid of it. Put a new worm clamp on here. Put it over the hose, put it onto this one, I'll slide it down, and I'll put that right about there. Take a flat bladed screwdriver, just tighten it up. So now that's over the metal part. Push this plastic clip back in here. Let me get this bolt caught here and make sure you get this bracket here with the other lines in there. I just want to get it caught. I'm not going to totally tighten it because I still need to mount the filler neck into the body and I want to have some movement on it. So I'll just get this caught. That should be good. Have some movement. I'll come back and tighten that afterwards. We'll put this plate in. So it's obviously it lines up with the shape that's there. And then the bolt holes will need to be lined up a little bit. You might have to twist it just ever so slightly. All right, put the screws in here. Might need to move the neck around. Get it caught. Don't tighten it down all the way. I want to get the other ones caught. Bring them all down pretty evenly. You don't need to kill these. Do 
feel them get tight, you can stop or reinstall the gas cap. Done there for now. Now I can tighten this bolt. And once you feel it get tight, just stop. Put these hoses back on. Take our lean on those pliers, put the clamps back down. Our filler neck was so rusted where it mounted the shield to the bottom. When I went to remove it, it broke off. So the nuts just spinning on the stud. Take some locking pliers. Try to grab onto this so it doesn't spin. Let's see. Do my best to hold it. And even if it breaks off, that's not a big deal. I'll find another nut to fit the new one. I'm going to reinstall the plastic protective shield. You just want to make sure you put that back in there because it does protect it from rocks and debris. Uh, it just goes up. And then there is a stud on the bottom. It will go over just like that. Our hardware broke off, so I found some appropriately sized hardware. The thread is M6 by 1.0, so just find some bolts and nuts that will work for you. We found a nice flange nut we had in our toolbox. I'll get that started. And then I'll use these bolts on the top. They don't have to be super long. They just need to hold this cover on. Uh, if you've got bolts with smaller heads, they might need some washers, but these should work just fine for us. started and get this one up in here. These ones happen to be 10 millimeter. Yours might be a different size. Just use the appropriately sized socket that you need and don't over tighten them. Once you feel them get tight, just stop. All they're doing is holding on the plastic shield. back on. Start your lug nuts by hand. Now just use the, you can use your socket or whatever. This is the special socket for these lug nuts. Just tighten them up by hand. When you lower the vehicle to the ground or you take it off the jack and jack stands, you'll want to torque these. We'll do that in a minute. Torque the lug nuts to 89 foot pounds in a cross pattern. Reconnect the green connector. It's up here on the other side of the ground connector. Push it up, it'll lock. Reinstall the trim panel. This goes around it, and then it sits over this little stud here. As we 
push it in place, you can uh, clip it down in place, and then that will line up. You want to find this with that, and just kind of screw it on, or it'll just push on. We'll take the white part of it, push it into the body, and then push the black pin in to lock it. And that's complete. We've replaced the filler neck, so now we're gonna erase the code. Code's been replaced. We can unplug the tool and start the vehicle. It may take a couple of tries to get it started because we did disconnect the fuel pressure, the uh, fuel pump relay to release, release the fuel pressure. Uh, fired right up. Uh, the check, and check engine light is off. I'll have to fill the car up with fuel because the check engine light was coming on at three quarters of a tank. And uh, we'll report back and see if we fix the code. Thanks for watching. Visit us at 1AAuto.com for quality auto parts, fast and free shipping, and the best customer service in the industry.